Hey everyone, Michael Anthony here. Van Halen, Chickenfoot, Sammy in the Circle. But anyway, you're listening to the only podcast that is dedicated to breaking down the entire Van Halen catalog one track at a time. And the podcast will rock. Ow! Hello, baby! Welcome, all you rockers, rockettes, and everything in between. You have stumbled into another edition of And the Podcast Will Rock. That's right. We are the show that dives into the catalog and the discography of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, Van Halen. I, of course, am one of your co-hosts. With me, as always, is Corey Morissette. Oh, by the way, my name is Mark Kamaya, but Corey, you knew that. I knew that, and now the people know that, too. Well done, my friend. How are you doing this fine evening? Man, it's it, it's been a tough week. It's been a tough couple of days, but uh, but I'm here. I'm here to talk Van Halen. I'm here to hang out with you. We're here to rock out and do the thing that we do. So uh, how are you been? How, how have you been? You know, what, a tough week as well, but, you know, looking forward to this time with you and with our friends. Uh, whenever whenever uh, life gets busy and things get tough, you, you surround yourself with your friends and you put on some cool music. And that's what we're doing here tonight. And I know... Uh, I've actually had some time to catch up on some podcasts too this week, which has been kind of nice. Uh, if you guys are, are checking out Pot of Thunder, of course, we recommend everybody listen to Pot of Thunder. They've been killing it uh, lately. Their last Always. few shows have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, they, they just did a great show on an Airborne song, which I forgot how much I really kind of dug Airborne. So that was a really good one to hear. Um, Deep Purple Podcast, I've been catching up on that one. I actually submitted a question for their three-year anniversary. So that was kind of cool. I'm still a couple of shows behind on that one. Um, but you know, trying to catch up on all the, the shows on the deep dive podcast network, um, Sean geek and fast fret. Uh, I caught their show, uh, this past week, Sean geek went solo. He's going to be on our show as well, but I, I thought it was kind of cool. Cause he talked about what makes a successful podcast, you know, uh, mm. is it monetary or, you know, what are your goals going in? And I know my goal, and I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this too, but my goal going in was just maybe we can find one or two like-minded people who, who dig this band or maybe not Van Halen historians. I know that still pisses off a ton of people. I, I still fucking hear about it every week. You're every a schmuck. Week. Here's all the shit you got wrong. It's like, I don't really give a fuck. Uh, but he said, you know, what makes a successful podcast? And it's finding like-minded people. And we've been really good at that. We've got some some great people that have reached out and, and let us know that they're kind of along for the journey. Uh, Risky uh, from uh, Metal Gods uh, actually went out today and said, well, it looks like I'm, I'm in, fully invested in the Van Halen catalog now because of our show. So. Wanted to give him a shout out. He's going to be on the show yeah, uh, coming up in July. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, Mark, what do you consider a successful podcast? It's easy to say a successful podcast is uh, yourself or a group of people, however many you have involved, uh, talking about a, a topic and then having an audience agree with you. I guess, I guess that would be the easy answer of like, oh, that's a successful podcast. But honestly, I think it goes more than that. It's do you have an audience? Sure. But does it have to be a grand audience? Does it have to be uh, like millions and millions of listeners uh, or even thousands? To me, honestly, no. I might have thought that way a few years ago when we were just kind of dipping our toe into the podcasting world. And, you know, if, if we don't have at least a thousand listeners per week, then we have just completely failed and we're not doing it. No. And you and I can both attest to this. Sometimes we just have to get together talk about something and have fun with our friends despite no one listening. Yeah, you know, we, we, we've been on a network like that where we had loads of fun, where we were talking amongst ourselves, just us with, you know, just friends talking about things that we enjoy, things that are funny, things that we love. And, you know, we didn't have necessarily the listenership that most people would dub uh, successful, but I thought it was a successful run just in the sense of, we got to do what we want to do. And I think that's what really makes a successful podcast is the thing that you uh, and whomever is involved with you, even including the audience, are you talking about and discussing the things that you want to talk about that make you happy, that, that make you feel like, hey, this is worth talking about? Then, yeah, 
if you're doing that, and if you're doing that, I guess, regu- uh, consistently, that there, that being the key word, I think having a successful podcast is talking about what you want, not necessarily having the hugest audience, but a, a good audience is, is helpful. But are you consistent with it? We have been fortunate in that we have been very consistent with this show, and I think that has gone a long way. So even even after it's all said and done, Corey, when we finally decide, you know what, I think uh, the podcast has rocked enough, um, I still will look back on it and go, that was a successful podcast. I am so happy about that. And it's not about how many followers, how many listeners we had, how much you know money we did or didn't make. It's just, did we have fun? And did we do it consistently? Yes. Then great. That's successful to me. You know, the last two shows were so much fun. Uh, because we did uh, last week, of course, we had Eric Senich from the Van Halen News Desk. And what a, the, a great guy, first of all. Yeah. Uh, the Van Halen Encyclopedia, right? And he, the, the actual he expert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The actual expert was on, kind of validated what we're doing here and said, it's all good that you don't know what Mike David Lee Roth used during the Diver Down sessions or any sort of minutia bullshit like that, that ultimately doesn't matter in the creation of the music, right? Right, uh, exactly. But it was a blast just listening to him tell stories that maybe we hadn't heard about Van Halen. And, and then the week before that was the How Many Say I episode, which, um, you know, we had Greg on the show and the poor bastard, you know, took a bullet for every other guest on the show. And people are commenting like, Greg took the biggest bullet. We now, now that that's off the wheel, they feel a lot better about coming on. But I still had a lot of fun recording that show. And, you know, we, 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 we rag on it, right, for kind of entertainment value. But, you know, the music was okay and stuff. But it, you know, e- e- even the bad songs uh, make for uh, great discussions, I find. Exactly. And it's not like it, it's still a Van Halen song, so we're not going to hate on it too much. We might say, yeah, this isn't the one um, other, you know, over some of the other songs that we've uh, discussed. But that happens. Y- you're not going to. Uh, uh, I was going to make a baseball reference and I decided not to because I don't like baseball that much and I don't think the references would work. So I'll just say you can't be perfect all the time, even if you are uh, as nearly a perfect a band as Van Halen is, as some people might say, especially our listenership. Um, but you can't be perfect every time. Sometimes you just uh, you just kind of have to you roll out a dud. You don't think it's a dud. Nobody sets out to make a dud of a song, but some songs are going to land a lot better than others. This happens with every single band. It doesn't matter who it is. And, uh, and it's funny that while we did have a great time with that show, uh, and we <laughs> were sorry for Gre- Greg, that is certainly the last song he wanted to discuss. It was not uh, the one that was sort of our favorites whatsoever, but we had fun. But I noticed something. Uh, every time we do a show, we put out a poll on Twitter. We do a poll and we let we uh, about the song that we're doing in episode four, and we ask you, the audience and the Twitter followers, uh, uh, is this song what dreams are made of, or is the dream over? Like we always discuss. And surprisingly, from what I recall, uh, maybe you can uh, uh, fact check me on this, but from what I recall, there were a lot of people that were non naysayers about uh, how many say I. They were actually in favor of the song, and we we angered them. Uh, <laughs> with our with our hot takes, but you know, that's the beauty of the poll because despite the fact that I I, I sense the cult of Mariano is behind all of the uh, contrary uh, uh, votes for the most part that we take part in, it's fine. Uh, there are some people out there that just have they have very very strong opinions, and it's usually the opposite of us. But that's why we put up the poll just to hear some feedback from the crowd. Um, Last week, we did Cabo Wabo, a very famous Sammy Hagar song. Uh, he named his tequila after it, and it's delicious tequila, I can confirm. Um, and for the most part, it was what dreams were made of. But uh, this, this, if I'm not mistaken, this poll caused some conversation. You know, I, I went back to the last few polls because you were talking about the How Many Say I poll. So I went back. Uh, first of all, let's go back to... Uh... Best of Both Worlds, which to me is almost a perfect oh. Van Halen song. To me, that should be 100% That's what dreams are made song. of, right? 86-14. 14. 14% <laughs> of the people thought this dream is over on Best of Both Worlds, and I find uh, that's shocking to me. Um, I, uh, I have to confess, and I think I even uh, commented on this poll, that uh, I, for whatever reason, read it wrong, and I messed <laughs> up the vote. So, I'm, so I have to say part of that 13% is, is on me because I messed up. I didn't mean to, 
<laughs> to click the dream is over. So uh, that's that's part of it. Fair enough, fair enough. And then we go to uh, how many say I? You had mentioned uh, 78% agreed the dream is over, but 22% voted what dreams are made of. For how many say I? Again, I find that kind of shocking. And we can attribute some of that, of course, to the cult of Mariano. But I think there's more to it than that. I, I, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess kind of what I alluded to that there, there are people out there that just, uh, some people just dig it. Uh, I think uh, our buddy Eric last week even chimed in. He even said that uh, he didn't hate the song. It's not one of their best, but he didn't hate it. He enjoyed uh, what it was. And uh, that's, and that's great. But uh, I just, I don't know. 22% saying like, no, 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 no. This is, this is way better than you guys think it is. Like, uh, if you say so. <laughs> well, and we are going back to and Eric actually would have downvoted it. He voted uh, the dream is over on that one. He had, he hummed and hawed, but eventually he, he did downvote it. So he did defend it, but eventually agreed with us on that one. But uh, Cabo yeah. Wobble, like you mentioned, uh, the poll ended up being 85%. What dreams are made of 15%. Uh, this dream is over. Uh, I have a few comments, and I'm going to start doing this every week on the poll. Uh, if you're listening to this and you want to comment on the poll, your thoughts on the song, I will read your tweet uh, on the show here. Uh, so let's start with uh, Kofefi Hefe, uh, <laughs> which is a tremendous name, uh, tweeted out, uh, tremendous song. There's a sleepy town south of the border. You go there once, you'll be there twice. Believe me, the wall is very, very effective. There'll be nowhere else to go. Many people have tried, many great people, perhaps some of the best people in the world. So, see what you there. And, I, and I appreciate you so much for so it. Feffy, heavy, thank you so much. That was fucking fantastic. Uh, Brian Peterkin, uh, my Canadian brother from uh, Ottawa, uh, calls it one of his absolute favorite songs. He is with Mark the Bat. That solo is within his top three all-time Sammy, or, uh, Eddie Van Halen solos. So yeah, tastely right. done as usual by EVH. Sammy paints a great picture lyrically of the sunny tropical locale in, locale, excuse me, in Cabo. Uh, Sammy's vocal performance after the solo was so great. Uh, we drink mescal right from the bottle, salt shaker, li little lick of lime thrown down, trying down, trying to reach the bottom where the guave worm. Well, he's mine, all mine. Amazing stuff. Unfortunately, never visited there. Uh, I've, after hearing that song, I really want to go there as well. And my apologies for oh, butchering, yeah. reading these. I've had a couple of a uh, couple of whiskeys in me already. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Van Halen loved the song. Uh, Sean Geek and Fast Fret. Uh, they commented and said, "I'll be honest, this one is borderline for me." Everyone is great on here. Eddie Sizzles, Alex, and his time change after the solo, the harmonies, but the lyrics on this one, I feel it takes away. The melodies are great. Just the words behind them. I don't know. Um, we, we, we both kind of praised the lyrics. Yeah. yeah. On that one, but I yeah, uh, yeah. uh, didn't agree on that one. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I mean, that happens. Just everybody interprets lyrics uh, in a particular way. There are times where you, uh, will wax poetic about a lot of diamond Dave's lyrics and I, and I will just kind of read them and go, <laughs> yeah okay uh um, you know and then and then vice versa with with uh, uh sammy's stuff so i mean it just it happens i have to point this out since we're reading uh, uh poll comments uh, i have to go back to <laughs> how many say i just because i didn't see this before but i'm gonna there's one comment that that uh shouts at me directly that says mark <laughs> if you think this is the lowest then i am really curious how you'll deal with the song once and all i can say to that is Time will tell. <laughs> and you know, he, he called you out, but I believe I also called how many say I, the, the, the floor for, for Van Halen song. So uh, I, I too am curious to, to get to once and, and to see <laughs> w which one we'll pick out of those two. I don't really recall much of once. Like I said, Van Halen three isn't a record. I revisit a ton. You know, no, I, no. I, I know the hits like without you and uh, fire in the hole, uh, great songs like that. But uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to once. Maybe we'll spin it tonight. Now something happened historically last week, Mark, in that oh, Eric yes. Zenich called his shot, pointed to the left field fence and said, if it's a Sammy tune, I want uh, Cabo Wabo, and then spun it. So and he spun it. Man. Can we That's go two weeks in a row? Can, can you manifest the song here tonight, Mark? I, you know what? There is a particular song that I want to manifest. It's the song that I try all the time. I tell you guys, uh, <laughs> there's a song I really want to do, my favorite Van Halen song that I haven't revealed yet, but once we spin it, I will. I have to strongly manifest it because, you know, after, after the week I've had and after the last couple of days, I was like, I need a really good, solid Van Halen song to just dive into, to rock out. I need the song that I want. So I'm, I'm manifesting it. And again, I won't reveal it unless we spin it. 
<laughs> well, hopefully tonight's your night, my friend. I know I'm I'm manifesting as well. Um, God, I really want some Van Halen too. I'm thinking somebody get me a doctor. I would love Ooh. to hear some classic Van Halen too tonight, uh, which means we're going to get the exact opposite, probably the way my week is going. But <laughs> who knows? Can it who happen? Knows? Who knows? Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll find out. What do you say, Mark? Should we give this uh, fucking wheel a spin and see what we come up with? It is only Corey and myself, no guests to uh, fall back on, so the wheel can be as fickle as she wants. Let's see what she gives us. Spin the wheel, please. Here we go! Here we go. Oh, this is going to be interesting, maybe. Oh, it's going to be a balance track, Crossing Over. This is an unreleased song from Balance. Wow. This, was, this didn't even make the album. It was actually uh, someone who listens to the show said, you know, that there's two unreleased tracks from the va- from the balance section. Will, will you put those on the wheel? And I thought, oh, why not? You know, the, I found them on YouTube. Uh, so this is one of them crossing over. Um, I really don't know anything about this song, uh, except that it was recorded during the balance sessions. It may have been on a Japanese import. Because, uh, of course, uh, to uh, increase... Uh, album sales in Japan and to cut down on piracy, they would put little, uh. Uh, a couple extra songs on there uh, for that market. And uh, this may have been one of those, but I really don't know my, that much about it. Mark, do you? I no, not at all. This is, I, I just assumed this was one of the uh, sort of the special edition tracks, one of the imports. So I, I, if that is the case, then nope, I am, we're flying blind here. And uh, just uh, looking it over here, Crossing Over was actually a Japanese bonus track. Uh, from balance so uh wow the, talk about going in blind i don't know if i've heard this song <laughs> at all oh well then this is going to be a uh we're we're popping the cherry as it were on this song it's uh it's not the first time it's happened but uh, it might be the uh i kind of started it, playing it a little bit the earlier yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i got so excited last time it happens yeah. We had, we had discussed that we were doing uh there there are special tracks uh some some imported songs that we have added to the wheel and most of those if not all uh I'm completely in the dark I I had because I had never heard them before so uh th- yeah it won't be the first time that we do this again so so yeah crossing over a Japanese bonus track from the balance sessions um according to setlist.fm they never played it live uh, not even in Japan uh kind of my my usual haunts that i try and find information on of course we don't know the song when we get when we show up here tonight uh, eric Sedich can can vouch for that he's like really you, <laughs> i have no fucking clue what's coming like nope you spin the wheel here we go uh so um so far uh for songs from balance have been kind of hit and miss i know uh, uh your lady there is a big fan of this album is she not she is um there and if I'm just going to show my hand or show her hand a little bit, uh, the song that she wants very much, the one that she manifests every time she listens, uh, does come from that album. But it's not this one. It's not the Japanese it is not this track. One. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is not this one. Hence, she is she is not up here joining us uh, quite yet. But uh, we're we're getting very close. Oh, I can't wait because uh, uh, she she's going to be a nice addition to the show with whenever that song comes up. Of course, balance. Uh, Released in 1995, uh, recording at Little Mountain Studios, uh, produced by Bruce Fairbairn, who uh, produced pretty much every big act you remember from the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, I, I do an Aerosmith show in my spare time, and uh, he did the big uh, three uh, resurgent albums for Aerosmith, Permanent Vacation, Pump, and Get a Grip. Um, he, this was his one album with Balance. From what we heard from Balance, uh, the production has been top-notch. I know we did uh, uh, the ballad off of this one, uh, Not Enough, uh, that that we both uh, gave a uh, that's what dreams are made of too. Uh, Big oh, fat yeah. money was another one uh, that we gave. I can't remember how we voted on that one actually. Do you remember how we voted on Big Fat Money? That one I can't. I I'm not sure. Uh, probably. I wonder if that was one of our split choices. I'm not. I'm not sure. I can't. I cannot remember. We've, nope. we've done a lot of these, folks. We, we have done a lot of these, so we'll, we'll go back and check that for you. But what do you say, Mark? Uh, let Let's go to 1995 in the Japanese only import track crossing over let's do it Thank you. 
kind of a, an ethereal start, and I was able to find some information on this one. Um, the song was originally written and recorded by Eddie in 1983, shortly after one of his friends had committed suicide. Uh, the song was oh, originally wow. titled David's Song and was given a chance at rebirth after the untimely death of their manager, Ed Leffler. Uh, Sammy wrote his own lyrics around this, around his feelings about both Leffler and his own uh, father's passing. Uh, so that would maybe kind of explain this kind of uh, otherworldly uh, intro that we have going on here. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to say, like, this is a, an interesting sort of intro into the song that uh, we don't we don't typically typically get from van halen they're not above a, a grand entrance that's for sure um you look to you look at a track like everybody wants some that has a very right. very fun sort of uh epic sort of intro and then um one you could even say eruption is an intro to you know you really got me uh or things of that nature um so they're not above it but yeah this uh this just this sounds uh a little bit different, a little bit different than what we're used to at this point in their career. But, um, but I'm not mad at it. It sounds like they're they're building to something. Maybe not at this epic rock song, but uh, now that we have some context about what this song uh, is trying to convey and the inspiration upon writing it, yeah, I think we're into we're in for some like kind of a, a powerful ballad. Yeah, and uh, some more information I was able to find here. Uh... And maybe uh, if anybody out there knows more, uh, by all means, let us know. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. But uh, this song was a B-side uh, on uh, Can't Stop Loving You, uh, which, of course, was the uh, the big uh, single uh, from Balance uh, and the bonus track for the Japanese release. Apparently, the original cover of Balance was deemed too offensive in Japan with the conjoined twins. Uh, so the <laughs> cover in Japan only had a single child on the seesaw. And uh, as an apology, I guess, uh, Japan got this song uh, on their imported release. So I don't know if that's true, but it, it kind of makes for a neat story that uh, Japan was maybe offended by the conjoined twins on the cover. Uh, so they got this song as like a, a value add, like, sorry about that. Here's this new track. I have listened to many a Japanese band in my day. I'm also a, a fan of, of Japanese anime and manga. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know that I fully trust that story that they got offended by this because... Japanese bands, especially in the metal genre, do some pretty outlandish shit, uh, whether it's in their live shows or their music videos. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and get on YouTube and look up the band Dear In Grey. And you, there's no chance, there's no chance Japan was uh, offended by this cover. And if they were, then I would really love to know the true explanation as to why, because this just, this doesn't seem... I don't know. I don't know if I buy that story. It could very well be true, but I don't know if I, I don't know. I, I think there's more to it than that. Well, I'm sure somebody out there knows for a fact and, uh, and they, they can let us know because yeah, we're... yeah, please do let us know because I'm, I'd be very curious. And if it Genuinely is true, then I, yeah. then I, then I will have to laugh at that, but you know, <laughs> Right away, um, I just have to point it out. Alex is it sounds like he is going uh back and forth from his uh his main set to like bongos, or maybe like maybe there's a gym bass, something else is going on there with the drums. It's it it's kind of throwing me off there for a second, but uh I think that's what he's doing. He's kind of giving you the best of both worlds, uh, no pun intended, on uh you know, big rock set, but then because the song is not uh, exploding uh, with the rest of the music, he's 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 bringing it back down. 
uh, you know, bouncing his hands on the bongos a little bit. At least it sounds like bongos to me. Uh, are, are you are you hearing what I'm hearing? Well, and I, I was reading a little bit more about this track, and they uh, they they, they kind of maintain that actually on the left side channel you can hear Eddie. Uh, his vocals and the electronic drums from 1983 on the right side is the rework uh, guitar, bass, drums, and vocals by the rest of the band. So you're may, maybe that that's kind of the distance. That's right? what I'm. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm hearing. It, um, well, it sounded it sounded like bongos. It was like how how is it how and why is Alex going back and forth from like his main set to the bongos and just uh uh, uh this weird uh, pattern? But okay, that makes way more sense. And you know what? Uh, 1983 electronic drums probably sounded a lot like bongos, so I could see why you would make that uh, comparison. Yeah, electronic. I mean, unless you were playing new wave or like 80s goth music, the uh, the electronic <laughs> drum set was just kind of like, eh, you, know, you just you're not going to get like the full rock sound that you that you really want. But you know, to each their own. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Pay attention to the left side. You should hear Eddie uh, singing uh, lead and his guitar in the. Uh, uh, electronic drums and on the right you hear van halen as they were in 1995 with the mm -hmm. reworked lyrics and everything so apparently in the second uh, verse uh you really get eddie singing uh mixed in there so let, let's keep her going and see if we can pick that up all right So lyrically, this makes a lot of sense with the backstory of Eddie writing this uh, for his song, who uh, his friend who committed suicide, uh, and then uh, the untimely death of their manager, Ed Leffler, and, and Sammy kind of picking up on that theme. You really get that lyrically in this song. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, th listening to it a little bit better now, it's very, um, the, the electronic drums underneath, yes, are very prominent. Like, I, I hear it now you can hear the difference and um this is very bass heavy uh, mm -hmm. i mean it's like uh i know uh eddie recorded this but I, i'm assuming michael still played bass for this yep uh, no uh, on, on on balance i think he played bass on pretty much everything including the uh, the import track so yeah well he's just i mean he's he's not going um uh, i don't want to say he's he's going ham but he's he's doing I don't know. It's just you, you don't really get a lot of super bass heavy Van Halen songs. So when we hear it in a song like this, it's it's almost jarring, but in a good way. Like I'm digging it. It actually makes the song sound heavier than it is. Mm -hmm. And yet uh, not what we were hoping for tonight, Mark. We kind of wanted some party music and we're getting this ethereal, uh, depressing uh, a song about, uh, you know, crossing over. Uh, but, you know, so far, so good. But it's yeah, but it's working. Yeah, it's just I, I I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of it goes. But uh, yes, uh, so far so good. This is a good start. All right. I'm loving this with the headphones on because you hear Eddie on the left side singing the yeah. out of ears and I'm like the rest and Sammy on the right side. This is really kind of a cool effect. It sounds almost like, uh, I, I don't know how many takes they did uh, the vocals in this, but uh, it almost sounds like it was a one, one take demo. And uh, you know, you got Sammy and Eddie, you trading off on vocals and it's like, ah, we'll, we'll mix it all together in po in, in post, but then they never did. And so now what you get is uh, I don't, I'm not calling it like a rough cut. I'm just giving it. It sounds more raw and visceral, which makes sense given the the context of what the song is. Cause that's it's um, 
you're getting two different perspectives, but the same sort of emotional uh, outpour, at least I am, uh, from the from the way the vocals are being uh, utilized here. I like this. Well, it's kind of a neat experiment to not uh, to incorporate the original 83 demo uh, in with with this new recording, right? Like that, that's kind of a new way yeah. of approaching it. Normally, you just re-record the whole thing, right? But they're actually yeah, exactly. just kind of dubbing over top of it. And that, that's kind of a cool way to approach it. Or even if you're not re-recording the the entire thing, you're re-recording. You would re-record at least certain aspects of it, um, like vocals, like uh, like the drum parts, for example. You know, being you got two, you got the same drum parts happening on two different kinds of sets, and uh, you know, maybe the the tempo is not is not off, but it, like there's there's like a slight sort of thing happening there where you can uh, kind of tell. You you can tell when when it's electronic now and when it's an actual set uh so there's i don't know it's normally you would just let's just clean that up and re-record the drums all together and then put it all together but uh no they didn't do that it's just kind of let's just throw it on top of one another and just keep just let it be what it is um very bold it's a bold move and somehow it's kind of working isn't it it is kind of working i'm i'm not <laughs> mad at it very long extended outro on this one it kind of fits the mood mm -hmm. of the song it does very uh it started off with this sort of ethereal feeling and it just carried out that way which again makes sense for the song it's very this is a very uh there was intent written uh uh when the song was written i think um just musically even not just lyrically but musically i think there was the intent of feeling like uh it's called crossing over. So this this song, the the music of this gives me the feeling of uh, someone kind of you know crossing over into an ethereal plane, and just the, the music is sort of a backdrop into uh, that transition. To me, it is anyway. Something interesting though, we did kind of get an Eddie solo, but not a typical Eddie solo, and also it was uh, kind of underneath everything if you listen close with headphones i recommend you can hear it but it's not at the forefront which is extremely non-typical uh for for a van halen track um even it, it doesn't matter what style they're doing whether it's a a slow power ballad uh you know party rock or whatever usually you get an eddie solo that's uh right in front and center but not this time no, but it, it it fits. Like this is not the kind of song you would uh, expect 
uh, from Van Halen, but you know, they're, they're capable of writing uh, tunes on uh, heavier subjects. It's not all about, you know, screwing and dancing and, and getting drunk and having a good time. Um, no. you know, everybody has, every band has, has these songs where they, they, they can go a little darker and do a song a little bit more serious. Um, maybe not a track that you uh, put on the mixtape for Van Halen, right. And uh, play at parties, but, um, I, I appreciate when a band kind of does something a little different and, and goes on a little more darker or more serious uh, road. Uh, so I, I didn't hate that at all. It's it's true. I, I appreciate it as well. Although one might assume that it contradicts what we said about uh, how many say I, it's fine. You can come at us all you want, but the, we can agree that this song is a little bit different from <laughs> how many say I. Um, so all of you, uh, uh, all of you pro how many say I folks out there don't come for us. We're just, you know, we're just telling you how we're, we're perceiving this particular track as opposed to that one. Yeah. It's an opinion based show. And uh, it is. Uh, and we're not experts. No, just like, just like assholes, everybody has an opinion. <laughs> so. Exactly. And uh, so that is crossing over. That is uh, you, you will not find that on the regular balance album. That is an import, a Japanese import. Um, so, hey, Japan got themselves an extra track, and it's an interesting track uh, to boot. But now that we have uh, we have dived, we, we dove, dived, whatever the word is, now that we've gone into it, my only question to you, Corey, is this. Crossing over, is the dream completely over, or is crossing over exactly what dreams are made of for you? I really appreciate the work that went into it. I appreciate the uh, incorporating of the uh, the 83 demo with uh, the, the new stuff on separate channels and how well that kind of worked together, just the, the production mastery that went into that. I, I appreciate how great the band sounds and that, that they were telling a story and it's something everybody can kind of relate to. Everybody's lost somebody. Uh, so everybody can kind of relate to a song like Crossing Over. So uh, it, it's not the great party song you'd expect from Van Halen, but uh, it was pretty cool, and I'm really glad we spun it tonight, and I think it's absolutely what dreams are made of. How about you, Mark? What dreams may come, indeed. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, here in the last few days, I've been, uh, as far as my music listening has gone, I've been quite the sad boy listening to a lot of uh, slow, sad, depressing shit. Sometimes I just do that because you know i like it and then sometimes it's because it's fitting a mood this is one of the songs that i would put on that list because uh while it is as, as you say it's not your typical van halen party music it's not your typical uh you know power ballad any of those things that you would get out of van halen this is something different yet personal um and I'm not mad at the fact that even though it's different it's not so different that it's not uh, recognizable as Van Halen. We've covered tracks in the past where we have thought, no, the dream's over for that. And a lot of our uh, excuse for it is it just doesn't sound like Van Halen to us. Um, there was one in particular that we've, that we've mentioned quite a few times on this show already did not feel like Van Halen to me, but it did feel it's different. Van Halen is allowed of if there's any band who's allowed to do something different within their entire catalog, it's them. They've earned the right to explore and experiment and do whatever musically they want to do. They've earned that. This song, uh, and, but some sometimes those songs that they experiment and try something different don't always land with a particular audience, uh, especially including me. This one, however, might not be your typical norm of Van Halen of that era or of any era, but this still... I don't know. I just, I really dug this. I dug the, the sense of otherworldliness that comes with it based on what the song is about, what it's the, the title of it. The song leaves you feeling like you are indeed crossing over. Like you're going, you're, you're going with the guy uh, uh, with the, uh, with David, I believe is, is uh, the name of the guy who's inspired the song or it's, there was a, a lot of inspirations behind it, but yeah, this gives me the feeling of going off into the distance, into the West, if you will, for you Lord of the Rings fans out there and being completely okay with it. If 
I cross the ethereal plane and I have this song accompanying me, I know everything's going to be okay. That's the song. It, that was the tone that it conveyed. It, I, I understood it. I think that's what they were going for. And thus it worked for me. I just, I, I really like the lyrics of this. I, I love how it sounds heavy without being too heavy. And I like that Eddie didn't feel the need to be front and center with a uh, rip roaring guitar solo. That's not to say we don't love it, but I love that he didn't have to do that for this song because there was no need for it. You still got him noodling in the distance, but not in the same way. And I appreciate it. So this is definitely a song I will come back to at some point. Um, it definitely sounds like a song that I have to be in the specific mood for. Lucky me, uh, the last few days have put me in such a mood. So yeah, I, I think Crossing Over is definitely one that I'm going to uh, put on the list for Van Halen songs to be um, put on replay. I probably won't replay it a thousand times like something like Panama or Jump. But when the mood should strike, Crossing Over is there. And that is the song for tonight, Crossing Over. Not what we manifested whatsoever, but what a, what a delight. I mean, who knows what we're in for next time. If we have more imports and uh, sort of special edition songs that, uh, that are on the wheel that we're not familiar with, and they come close to uh, being as good as this, then we're, we're in for some good shows in the future. You know, and I was able to find the email of the guy who recommended we put it on the wheel. His name is Daniel Lalonde. Uh, he asked, uh, do you have That's Why I Love You on the wheel? It was left off Van Halen 3 and also crossing over from the Japan version of Balance. Would love to hear your take on those. So uh, thank you, Daniel, for pointing those yeah. out. because I completely forgot about them. Uh, so I put them on the, on the wheel immediately. I thought it was a great idea once I found them. And yeah, and crossing over uh, absolutely worked for both of us. Uh, a tremendous cut. And hopefully for, for all the, uh, the Van Halen fans out there who don't know the exact minutia of every single minute of the lives of the band, maybe <laughs> haven't heard this song. And, and maybe we're, uh, you know, it, it was introduced to us here tonight. Maybe the, the listeners are being introduced to this track as well. And maybe someone's going through a, a, a tough time where they lost somebody. And, you know, I, I was thinking it back, you know, just last year, I lost my sister-in-law and I thought, geez, you know, crossing over was, would have been such kind of a comforting song uh, to play oh, during that, during that time. And, um, you know, I, I love that song for it. And I love that Van Halen kind of went outside their comfort zone and, and did a, a more serious topic. Didn't have the big, uh, you know, Eddie Van Halen solo, like you mentioned, or anything that was kind of stereotypical Van Halen, even the kind of the accents that Alex would put on a song, uh, you know, when, when little brother's playing guitar and he would put in a little, you know, cymbal hit or something or a little Tom roll just to kind of, to prove right. that he was still there. None of that was in the song and, and it was wonderful for it. Uh, thank you, Van Halen. Uh, I'm so glad we had this song tonight, even though it wasn't the song you or I uh, wanted or uh, even Tona song, but man, it worked. And I'm very glad we spun it tonight. The The wheel threw us a bone and, uh, and I appreciate the wheel for that. So let's hope uh, the wheel is kind to us next week. Let's hope the wheel is kind to us uh, for the weeks to come. I know we still have some songs that we're not looking forward to talking about that's on the list. And eventually we're just going to have to, but you never know. We might get some some leeway with that whole thing, but uh, until that time, this is what uh, this is what we do. You guys know this. If you're if you've tuned in before, or if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome and thank you. Uh, this is we dive into a song uh, by Van Halen, one track at a time. We discuss it. We we analyze it. We we do the best we can without being experts on the subject we're just fans that's the thing we're fans we love the band we love the music and we love when we get happy accidents like this where we're not familiar with the song at all uh so i wonder what that's going to sound like listening for the first time and wouldn't you know it we absolutely adored it uh that is why we do this show it's just to uh rejuvenate our love for a band that we already love um, and we know you love the band, otherwise you wouldn't be listening. So thank you for listening, and thank you for being a part of this. Um, Corey, th this is why we do the podcast. This is what I think makes a successful podcast. A couple of guys talking about something they, they love and uh, you know, having, having a, a sort of a profound uh, reaction to something that is – you know what I'm trying to say here. It's just like it's – 
I don't know. I'm really, I'm really, this song's kind of in my head now. So I'm like, just like really, <laughs> really, really thinking about things. It's, it's got me all, all messed up, but no, I, I, I really dug this. And this is why we do the show for gems like this, but you know what? We're not the only ones that uh, love to do podcasts on bands. We love, we are part of the deep dive podcast and network, and they have every podcast you could possibly think of about classic rock bands. Uh, we have an iron maiden podcast. We have a black Sabbath podcast. Hey, Corey and John Mariano have a podcast about Aerosmith called backtracks where they make their own, they're put, uh, putting a list together to make their own mixtape. Is that you can tell them more about that, Corey, it's your show. That's exactly what we're doing. We're going through the entire Aerosmith catalog. And at the end of it, we're going to have compiled the ultimate 18 track Aerosmith mixtape. So the first 18 shows are pretty anticlimactic. Uh, Mark guests on show 11, uh, we, which will drop next week. I, I can't wait for that. It was a very fun show. Um, yeah. And we, we, we spin a dice. We pick a song. I know your dice was pretty loaded with hits. So guaranteed show 11 is going to be a song everybody knows because those are the <laughs> ones you put on there, my friend. But um, we're currently recording up into the 20s. So we're in the show like 28. And now the fight happens. What do we take off the mixtape and what do we put on? And if oh, anyone yeah. knows uh, the cult of Mariano and John Mariano, arguing with him is like arguing with a brick wall. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really having a hard time. I need some tips on how I can defeat him because he's just going to populate this thing with all. I'm just going to cave every single time. I, I, need, I need Mark. Mark, you got to come back on the show and you got to help me out. I got to keep uh some of these uh songs that he doesn't like on the mixtape a little while longer and I'm, I'm 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 really struggling with that i will gladly come back on the show because i i adore aerosmith as well and um and while i enjoyed my pick i just there are there's just so many other songs that i wish i had thought about you know of course in hindsight and in retrospect so yes i have to come back on the show so that we can talk about more aerosmith so uh, gladly i will gladly help you out Corey. and you know who else is on uh, that show uh scott uh, from the Magicians podcast, uh, the show all about Uriah Heep. Um, he just started a new season uh, covering one of the live albums of Uriah Heep. Uh, it's fantastic so far. By all means, check that out. He's going to be on our show as well coming up this summer. Uh, I, I kind of build it as the summer of the Deep Dive Podcasting Network because we have Scott from the Magicians podcast coming on. I'm hoping to get some guys from the Deep Purple podcast on. And of course, we have Risky uh, from Metal Gods uh, coming on. I'd love to get uh, one of the guys from Diary of the Mad Men on as well. Um, talking about Van Halen, they they all uh, message means uh, we want to spin the wheel, and they're all very happy that Greg took the biggest bullet and took how many say I off the wheel. Uh, so they're very <laughs> happy about that. But uh, check it out, check us out this summer, July and August, or sorry, June and July will be a lot of deep dive uh, themed shows as all those guys come on our show, spin the wheel, and hopefully have a lot of fun talking Van Halen. That is going to be a great time, and I cannot wait for it. Be sure to check out all the wonderful shows on the Deep Dive Podcasting Network. You are sure to find something you love, something you will enjoy and have fun. If you remotely like the stuff that we do here, you're going to enjoy any and every one of those shows. Uh, Corey, if the people want to come to you directly, where can they find you, and where can they find the show? Well, they can find me at CD Marset on Twitter and Instagram, and they can find the show at uh, Podcast Will Rock on Twitter and our website, www.podcastlerock.com. Um, you know, let us know what you think. I know a lot of people that don't like the show have been leaving reviews on iTunes and been lowering our number on there. So I would really appreciate it if anybody out there who actually enjoyed our show, and I know there's a couple of you, if you could go on iTunes and Spotify and leave us a decent review, that would certainly help with my mental health because I read all the bad ones and it's like, fuck, I, God, we suck. Uh, but I, I know that there are a couple of people out there who don't think we suck or don't think we suck that bad. Please leave a review and let's get that number kind of back up into the respectable territory. I would just consider it a personal favor. I would love that. We, we, we got to throw the naysayers away. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't mind if they come for me personally, but it's like, don't attack the show when yeah. there are so many people that actually enjoy it. And there are quite a few of them. So let's not what? let the naysayers win. That's right. And I got, I got to give a special shout out to Anthony. Uh, he's at monkey noodles on Twitter. Uh, I think he, he listens to a ton of podcasts and he always tweets out his five-star podcast for the day. He listens to podcasts that work all day. He quite commonly throws us in there. The last one he did, a five-star podcast uh, of ours was actually uh, Big Fat Money uh, from Balance. So he's uh -huh. working his way uh, through the shows here. And I just want to say, hi, Anthony, if you hear this one, we really, really appreciate you, A, listening, and B, 
tweeting out that you love the show. It just, it makes us feel good. It makes us feel like what we're doing uh, is worthwhile. And and all of you that have, have reached out and said, Hey, we're digging the show and we're going on this ride with you because that's what that that's the point of the show. It's not to delve mm-hmm. into the minutia because honestly, I, that that'll get boring after a while, right? Like just knowing every single fact about a band, we're kind of rediscovering things yeah. as we go. And, and that's kind of the fun of it. We spin the wheel. We don't know what we're going to get. We got an unreleased track here tonight and we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, so that's the point of the show. And to all the people who get that really, truly a thousand thank yous. Thank you to all of you, especially you, Anthony. Keep up the good work, and we'll continue to do the same. Uh, if you want to find me, I am at Mark the Bat on Twitter and Instagram. Feel free. There, are, People have no, sh- no shame in calling me out on all the things that I say wrong, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. It's cool because you're listening, and I appreciate you. We both appreciate you, and we appreciate the music of the mighty Van Halen. That's why we do this show, and it is called And the Podcast Will Rock, and we will rock you later. Later.